Working from home has its own set of challenges, some of which we're easily able to admit, and others just sneak up on you. So if you've ever felt alone at work, keep on watching. Now, as you guys know, I decided to take a note from the Reluctant Traveler over on Apple TV and decided to create a series based on the idea that I want to be, well, I'm not, I don't want to be here, but I have to stay in Florida for a little while. So thanks to Virginia, we named it the Forlorn Floridian. But the thing about it was that when I very happily accepted that idea, I didn't really know what forlorn mean, meant, so I had to look it up, and that's why you're seeing it on the screen. <laughs> but the reality is that one of the bigger challenges that I face as I decide to stay home is the fact that I have to work from home. And there was a little wrinkle added to the mix uh, last week, and so now I definitely have to make sure that I am available and at home at all times for reasons that I'm not going to get into and that don't matter right Anyway, I decided to start working like, you know, the reality is that this is not going as well as I had hoped. It is now the end of March. I have to look up for the rent for April and all the stress from everything that happened last week and then this week, it kind of gets to you after a while. And here's the thing. I don't care if you are working from home because your family, your family, your business decided to send you home or because you have always been a freelancer and you work from home or you're a content creator. And if you're a content creator, I don't care if you have one follower or a million. If you make enough money to pay the cable bill or if you make enough money to pay for a staff. The reality is there are moments when you're going to feel alone when you're going to feel sad. When you're going to feel like you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, brush your teeth, take a shower, eat, or do anything. And how you handle those moments is the most important part of this entire exercise of working from home. Now, let me start by saying that I'm not interested in the millions or the fortune or the fame or anything like that, because I decided a few years ago that I was not going to continue the rat race. I need money to be able to sustain myself, my husband, my daughter, and my mother-in-law, and that's about it. I don't really need a lot of money. I don't really care for a lot of fancy things. One of the things that I noticed when I was reviewing some magazines, and you'll see more about that in a later episode, is the fact that the things that used to attract me, like a big house with a big yard, nice car, and all this other stuff, really doesn't interest me anymore. And that discovery actually got me a little sad and a little depressed and the reason for that i'm assuming and i gotta be honest with you i'm not entirely sure that that's why but i think one of the reasons why that got me a little sad is because i realized that i had spent all these years trying to have the better job trying to get a promotion trying to do the best that i could start to save all this money and and do all these things when in reality, that's not my dream and it's not my interest. I really don't care if my house is rented or if it's mine. I care that I have a place to stay where I can have my family with me, where we can have some food. I do love the idea of going out and, and having a good time in town like you're seeing on the screen and, and, and just enjoying being around people again because, of course, for the last few years, we were not able to do so. Now... When you're working from home, there are going to be a lot of periods when you're really, really isolated. I don't care if you have a million followers on Twitter or if your company provides you with a chat or anything like that. It's the thing that humans tend to like to be around each other. And when you're working on your own, it does take a long time for you to get used to. You no longer have a desk next to you with somebody talking to you or whatever you don't have the water cooler moments or the lunch break conversations or even the games of dominoes because we used to love to do that back in uh, where i used to work and the reality is it, it takes a moment for you to get used to this and once you get used to this it's going to take you a moment every once in a while 
to get your head back in the game. And what I'm trying to tell you with all this is, first of all, don't let anybody tell you that you're not a content creator or a freelancer or that you're working. Don't let anybody make the rules for you. Make your own rules. Within law, of course. And don't think that you have to have the better house, the bigger car, the the, the, the kids, the, the dog, the picket fence, in order for you to be successful. Successful is something that you decide. If you decide tomorrow that all you want is 10,000 subscribers because you have other sources of income and you can make it with that, and that was what makes you happy because you can control the conversation in terms of being able to answer everybody, and if you have a live stream, you can actually see all the comments and whatnot, and that's what makes you happy, do it. One thing that I have noticed about all these large content creators, it, there's two things that I've noticed actually. One of them is that they're really insecure. I mean, when you have a content creator that has over 10 million followers and you make a little video about them and they are so butthurt that they have to come and leave a comment on your video, yeah, you're not as secure as you think you are. The other thing that I have noticed is that most of the content creators, and, and, and even if it's for a sponsorship with a, a psychological uh, website, but the reality is that a lot of content creators either burn out or have severe uh, depression and other mental health il um, ailments. I already had those. I've had those since I was in my teens. So it's not different. It's a little different for me because I've always had them. But to watch people that are usually go, 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 that they're all about the hustle and all of a sudden comment or actually demonstrate that they're not doing well, it's very interesting to me. So in all honesty, if I only grow to 10,000 subscribers, I don't have a problem with that. I'm okay with it. Now, right now, all I really need is enough income to help my family in, in making um, ends meet and, and paying the bills. But the idea of going on the rat race again really makes me want to throw up. So if I wanted to give you any piece of advice on how to not necessarily avoid, because I don't think you can avoid sad moments or, or any kind of circumstance. But if I could give you a piece of advice so that you can, it, it, you can grow and not be as scared of having moments like this, maybe you should remember that the sun always comes out. Even on the cloudy days, the sun is there. You are still here. You have beat a lot of people that could not handle this and decided to bow out. You're not better than anybody and they're not better than you. You just decided to stick it out. And that's a big deal. Because I can guarantee you, 90% of the people that decided to buy out, bow out are probably thinking to themselves that they should have stayed here. If there is an afterlife. Be present. If you're having a bad day, you know what? Revel in your bad day. If you can't get out of bed for one day, don't get out of bed. Go read a magazine, read a book, watch TV, play some games. Do whatever makes you happy. And then the next day, you just tackle that beast again. But don't give up just because people tell you that you're supposed to create XYZ amount of content or because you're supposed to do so many pieces in, in so many social media outlets. You have to have everywhere a presence or any... Just ignore that. Ignore all the noise. Create a plan for yourself and stick to your plan. And if you have one bad day, just relax. Now, if you have three or four or, or more days when you can't get out of bed, then I would definitely tell you, you need to talk to somebody. But if it's just one day that you, you know, you're not feeling it, it's okay. It's okay to take a break. People who care about you will watch whatever you post whenever you post it because they actually care about what you have to say. How many times a week you say it is irrelevant. 
Anyway, that's all I wanted to say for today. Thank you so much for watching and supporting us on the mission. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.